In this video, I'm going to take a look at infrared spectroscopy. So the first thing we need to appreciate is that covalent bonds vibrate at a particular frequency. So we've just got two pictures on the screen there. So we've got this covalent bond here. So we've got a green atom and a black atom, and it's basically vibrating at a particular frequency. We've got a completely different bond here. So we've got a, a white atom and a red atom different atoms, different masses, it vibrates at a different frequency. So covalent bonds vibrate at a natural set particular frequency. So if you apply infrared radiation to these covalent bonds, if you can match their natural frequency, they will vibrate more. So instead of just vibrating a small amount, the amplitude will increase. So I've tried to show that with those two diagrams there. So it's the same bond, but you can see there's a greater amplitude in the vibration. So we'll just flick backwards and forwards. Hopefully that will make that a bit easier to appreciate. So covalent bonds can absorb infrared radiation if the frequency matches the natural frequency of the bond. Okay, so if we have a look at a really, really simple example of an organic uh, compound and its infrared spectrum. So we've got here um, methane, and I've only shown three different frequencies. Okay, so we've got 3,300 to 3,100 centimeters to the minus one. So that's the unit we use in infrared spectroscopy for these waves, okay? They're called wave numbers, and it's literally just how many waves per centimetre. So this is 3,300 to 3,100 waves per centimetre. This one here is 3,100 to 2,800. So I'll try to show that with that slightly wider um, uh, wave there. And then 2,800 to 2,500. So imagine they're all passed through the molecule. And on the other side here, you can see I've typed up there transmitted. So what I'm trying to show is all of this wave here, this three, three to three, one, that's all just going straight through the molecule. So nothing in the molecule is absorbing that particular wave number. And it's all pretty much all hitting the detector at the other side. If we look at this wave here, three, one to two, eight, you can, I'm trying to show there that not all of that wave gets to the detector. So a smaller percentage would be transmitted. And so what's happening is something in this molecule is absorbing that energy. And the something is the covalent bond. Now I've deliberately chosen the simplest organic molecule to start with because there's only one type of bond in methane. It's a CH bond. Okay. So this wave is going through, the bonds are vibrating more. So some of this energy is being absorbed, which means less of it gets to the detector. And then I've got another wave here, 2,800 to 2,500, all goes through. So nothing in the molecules absorbed that uh, particular wave number. So how is that translated on a spectrum? And I've severely simplified this spectrum the actual spectrum of methane is a bit more complicated than that. I'll explain why in a second. But basically, the way that's seen is, so if we match this 3, 3 to 3, 1, that's about there. You can see it's virtually 100%, this is transmittance here, virtually 100% of that is transmitted through to the detector. Okay? And we get this dip. We call that an absorption. So what that's saying is something in the molecule has absorbed um, infrared of this roughly around 3,000 centimetres to minus one. And the thing that's done that is the CH bond. And then when we go back down, sorry, back down the wave number range, nothing in the molecule absorbs this, so it's pretty much all transmitted to the detector. So if we move on to a a slightly more complex molecule. So I've gone from methane to methanol. So we've got some different bonds in this molecule. We've got the CH bonds. We've got a C single bond O. 
we've got an OH. So three different bonds means three different um, pockets of infrared radiation are going to be absorbed. So let's have a look at the, the sort of diagram here. So three, six to three, two. Right, some of it's been absorbed because I'm trying to show there that it's not all transmitted. Three, one to two, eight. Again, some of it's, it's um, absorbed by the molecule. All of that pretty much gets through. All of that pretty much gets through. Whereas this one here, some of it's been absorbed because it's not all transmitted. So, how do we interpret the spectrum because of that? So, what we've got here is 3, 6 to 3, 2. So, that's this absorption here. Go for a different colour, all red. So, that there is due to an OH bond of an alcohol. Now, I'll show you the full sort of um, data sheet table with all the different absorptions on. But just for now, that absorption there is due to this bond here absorbing this infrared radiation. 3, 1 to 2, 8. So that's this one here. There you see H's. And if we go to this one here, 1300 to 1000. So something, see it's getting quite um, complex here, quite messy. So not exactly sure which um, absorption that is, but something in there is going to be due to this C single bond O. Okay, if I go back to the methane, that's due to the CH bond, because that's the only bond in the molecule. And what you'll find is with um, organic infrared spectra, you always get something going on around about the 3000 mark, because all organic molecules have CH bonds. Okay, so like I said, we've got um, the data sheet with all of the different absorption ranges on. So you don't have to memorize any of these. They're there. You, all you have to be able to do is look at a spectrum and be able to assign some of the peaks, some of the absorptions. Okay, and you just literally just refer to this. And then what that can do is it can give you an idea as to what functional groups you've got in your molecule. So I know when I start teaching infrared um, spectroscopy, some students get a bit panicked because they think they have to be able to see what every single absorption is due to. You don't have to do that at all. So don't try and assign every absorption. Concentrate on this region here. This is what we call the diagnostic region. So that's sort of between 4,000 and 1,500 centimetres to the minus one. So that's where your sort of main focus should be. And then anything below 1500 centimetres to the minus one is what's referred to as the fingerprint region. So it's more difficult to assign peaks in there because of the sort of more complex nature. Now it's called the fingerprint region because it's unique to that molecule. So what you find now is modern day um, infrared spectrometers have a, a database, a spectral database, and it just looks for a match in the library that it's got stored, okay? But once you've got a rough idea of what the molecule is, you could then go to the fingerprint region and maybe assign one of the absorptions. But I would do that once you know what the molecule is. So I just thought I'd finish with some typical spectra. Now I'm aiming this video more at sort of um, first year A-level chemistry students. So you're just starting out with um, infrared. Now obviously, when you get into second year chemistry, the, there are more functional groups. So there are obviously more, the spectra start getting more complex. But this is just a starting point. So hopefully this will help you sort of cement your understanding of the, the, uh, the concept. And then you can move on to more complex spectra. So we're going to look at three. So the first one is what does the typical infrared spectrum of an alcohol look like? And the giveaway sign that this is an alcohol is this absorption here. So we've got a sort of curved absorption. It's not massively wide, but it's not sort of spiky like these here. Okay, so we've got a curve here, and that's due to the OH 
of an alcohol. So moving on to carboxylic acids now, this one here is for ethanoic acid and hopefully you can see another sort of curved absorption. Now if I just flick back to the other one, so we'll compare that to that, this one's much broader, okay? So this is the OH of a carboxylic acid. Now, if we go to the data sheet information, so we've got the OH of an alcohol, which is what we've spoken about already. So that's between 3,200 and 3,600, whereas the OH of a carboxylic acid is slightly lower in wave numbers, 2, 5 to 3, 3. So it's a, it's a wider range, it's a lower range, but notice it says in the OCR, that's what I teach, the OCR um, data sheet, it's broad, okay? So go back to the spectra. So there it is there, the OH of a carboxylic acid. It's between that range, sort of two and a half to three, three, and it's broad, okay? Now the other sort of typical um, absorption you would see in a carboxylic acid is this one here. So that's a really strong absorption at around about 1700 centimetres to minus one. That's due to C double bond O. So when you're seeing an infrared spectrum, really broad at the 3000 end, and a strong absorption at 1700, you're 99% looking at a carboxylic acid, okay? I wouldn't bother assigning any more peaks. I mean, you could go for the, there is a C single bond O um, in a carboxylic acid. Now we've got that they tend to absorb in around this range. So it could be one of these here. So I'll just put C single bond O question mark. Not exactly sure which one that is. Okay, but certainly those two, definitely. If I go back to the alcohol. Alcohols have also got C single bond O's in. And so remember, we said about a thousand. So yeah, one of those, let's go for that. C single bond O. Okay. Um, what else can we say about this one? These spiky ones here at around just on 3000, they're gonna be your CHs. But really, every since every organic molecule's got those, I personally wouldn't, wouldn't really bother um, identifying those. Going back to the carboxylic acid, these here are CHs, sort of little spiky bits of the broad absorption. So that'll do for that. And the only other um, infrared spectrum I want to look at is the aldehyde or ketone. Um, so what have we got? There's that strong absorption look at 1700 centimetres to minus one. So that is your C double bond O. So notice at around about the 3000 mark, there's no sort of curved broad absorptions. So you've got no OH. So it's, it's probably worth writing that on the spectrum. There's no OH in this molecule. It can't be an alcohol, it can't be a carboxylic acid, um, but there is a C double bond O. So potentially it could be an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay, so the final thing we'll do is just to compare the, the spectrum for methane that I used in the, in the video. That really simplified, I did say at the time, it was massively simplified. That's the actual infrared spectrum for methane. So you can see there's a bit more going on in that one compared to that one. So what's the reason for the higher number of peaks in real infrared spectra? And it's down to the fact that there's different types of absorptions. So we've really only, or we, at A-level, we only really need to consider the symmetric stretching. We don't even need to know that they're called symmetric stretching at A-level, but that's what we consider. But you can see there are lots of different ways the bonds can actually vibrate. Okay, so you can have anti-symmetric stretches, rocking, wagging, twisting, scissoring, and there are even more than that. So that's why the spectra are actually more complex than I've used in the video.